Objective, to figure out how photos and film are developed. Mission Log, March 2018. Materials, the camera film, the portable darkroom, four beakers, a hot plate, an ice bath, labels, the developer, the stop bath, the fixer, water, the permawash, the photo flow. Observations, the only observation that changes is the one at the end, which we will come to shortly. However, we can note on small observations that happened along the way. Hold on a second. All these liquids, these chemicals, they're all clear. All of them. Uh, well, uh, colored me surprise. When you get down to it, there really is only one observation. The amount of pictures you got and the appearance of the film. There's not a lot to say for my group. Nearly the entire thing was clear. We had four pictures that you could see with the naked eye, all of which were very faded. Everything else was completely invisible or just not there. Nothing else seemed to be wrong with the film except for the lack of pictures in black. Conclusion In conclusion, my group was bad. I only got the chemicals and put them there ready for use. I didn't have an important job. It wasn't my fault. I found out that photos can be developed using this method. It does work. What I learned, however, is that you need to be incredibly precise in the manner in which you do it, or you start to lose pictures from your film like my group did. Honestly, though, four pictures out of 24? Only one-sixth? How does something like that happen? <coughs> Josh! Sean! Anyways, the data and procedure showed us that, like I said, this method of development works. The objective has been completed, and we now know that this is how pictures are developed, even if we aren't very good at it. There are no unknowns that we needed to find, nor was there any data or calculations involved. Overall, this lab taught us about the core parts of photography development, and we now know that chemical reactions happen in every circumstance in every day, whether we know it or not. This lab is extremely complicated at a molecular level, but to us it just seems like a bunch of swirling liquids in a box. It truly goes to show, don't judge a book by its cover. Now, considering that this section and section 5 are the two hardest, most scientific sections, it is only appropriate that I will be referencing many of the statements I made in that part. Hold on to your seatbelts, because this is going to be one doozy of a section. Let's follow the same order we did in section 5, as that is the only logical way to go. It's simple enough. We'll do the stages in the same order as the procedure, explain the chemicals in each solution, and then how they contributed to the process and science we discussed. The first part... The developer, pH of pure base 14. What does it contain? Metal bisulfate, hydroquinone, sodium carbonate, and sodium sulfite. The sodium carbonate and sodium sulfite are what transform the silver halides into pure black silver, which makes this the developer in the first place. The metal bisulfate and hydroquinone join together to form metal with an O. Why is there an O? Why not name it something else? Uh, anyways, this assists in the same process as the sodium and polyatomic ions. They both help to bring out certain tones and variations of black to make the picture of lighting in different ways. The next part, the stop bath. What does it contain? What? Oh, oh wait, it's only acidic acid. Pure acid for neutralization that doesn't even really affect the picture except for stopping the developer. Less cool than developer, I'd say, but still about a 6 out of 10. After the stop bath comes the fixer. The fixture is made of two separate solutions, solution A and solution B. Solution A contains ammonium sulfite, sodium bisulfite, ammonium thiosulfate, sodium acetate, and water. And solution B contains sulfuric acid, aluminum sulfate, and water. Solution A sodium acetate and ammonium thiosulfate are both very important. They are what sticks the black silver to the emulsion in the film, making the image stay. The ammonium sulfite and sodium bisulfite assist in making the layer above the silver highlights due to their chemical binding properties, allowing for the image to stay even more. Uh, solution B, sulfuric acid and aluminum sulfate also help in this process, and are made acidic in order to combat any leftover developer. The fixer does truly fix the photographs right to the film. <laughs> The permawash is the primary cleaning agent after water, meaning that all of its chemicals share the same purpose, to act as a sort of cleaning soap, erasing any trace of the chemicals that came before them. Many soaps contain polar molecules in the chemicals that will take any particles that aren't or shouldn't be there, though it only works on liquids due to the fixture sticking to the film. The chemicals that do do this in the perma permawash are ammonium sulfite, sodium sulfite. Lastly comes the photoflow, which consists of... Peterite 
octophenoxy polyethoxyl alcohol, uh, propylene glycol, and water. We know that the photoflow's main job is to finish the job by providing help and protecting the film, and this is exactly what it does. The p p pteret octophenoxy poly polyethics ethoxy ethyl alcohol does exactly this. It's completely neutral and acts as an agent to bond with the film to make it stronger, less susceptible to light, and less susceptible to damage. It's essentially a layer. Each and every chemical does something. Balance out the pH, allow for a balanced chemical equation, bond to the film, develop the picture. None of them are just there to be there. It's actually quite impressive how they got this down to a science. It's pretty evident that the most convenient way this is going to go for both of us if if I just say the items, the composition, and the chemical names, and I put the chemical formula on the screen. So, for my first picture, the first item is a sign. It, it consists of a post, which is made of carbon steel, and the top part, which is made of aluminum and plastic adhesive. The post is made of carbon and steel, and the aluminum and plastic adhesive are made of aluminum and a chemical called polyvinyl chloride. The car consists of the frame, which has aluminum, white paint, and steel. The tires, which have aluminum and rubber. Windows, which have glass and plastic lights. Uh, polycarbonate plastic and copper wire. The aluminum is aluminum. The white paint is titanium dioxide. The steel is steel. Uh, the aluminum is aluminum. The rubber is something called isoprene. The windows uh, have the glass, which is silicate, and the plastic, which is polycarbonate. Uh, for the lights, it's polycarbonate and copper. The street consists of concrete, asphalt, and yellow paint. These are made by concrete and asphalt, which are just the names of the chemicals, and a paint chemical named Orange Yellow S. For the jacket, it's made of cotton and zinc, which is cotton, gossypium, and zinc. Allen consists of skin, hands, hair, and eyes that we can see, which is made primarily, not primarily, but entirely of keratin and collagen fibers. The building is made of concrete, wood, and drywall, which is concrete, cellulose, lignin, and gypsum. The trees, which have no leaves on them, are made of cellulose and wood fibers, which is made of cellulose and cellulose lignin, respectively. The window is made of glass and plastic, silicates, and polycarbonate. The wall is concrete, wood, drywall, which is made of concrete, cellulose, lignin, gypsum. Uh, there's a few cars in there, which consist of aluminum and steel for the frame, aluminum and rubber for the tires, glass and plastic for the windows, polycarbonate plastic and copper wire for the lights, which are made of aluminum and steel for the frame, aluminum and isoprene for the tires, silicates and polycarbonate for the glass and plastic, and then polycarbonate and copper for the lights. The shopping cart is made of aluminum, plastic, and steel, which is just aluminum, polycarbonate, and steel. The jacket is made of cotton and zinc, which is gossypium and zinc. The jeans have denim, copper, and zinc in them, and denim consists of cotton and blue dye, while zinc is made of copper and zinc. The shoes have a sole and a body. The sole is, consists of rubber and plastic, which is isoprene and polycarbonate, and the body consists of cloth, plastic, and acrylic. Now, cloth red 2R is a specific type of cloth, but if you remove the red dye, it becomes cloth 2R, which is what I am showing here. Uh, then there's also polycarbonate and polymethyl, which is acrylic. Josh is consisting of the same things as Alan, just keratin and collagen fibers between all four of his different physical depictions. The lights contain glass, copper, a battery, and plastic, which are silicates, copper, zinc, and iron, and polycarbonate, respectively. The house is uh, a little large. It has a ceiling, which is ceramic, a window, which is glass, wood, and plastic, walls, which are made of drywall and wood, columns, which are plastic and wood, and a door which is just wood. The ceramic is made of something called kaolin. Windows are made of silicates, cellulose lignin, and polycarbonate. The drywall is gypsum, the wood is cellulose lignin. The columns, plastic and wood, are polycarbonate and cellulose lignin, 
and the door is just cellulose lignin. The road is made of concrete, asphalt, and yellow paint, which we've all seen before. The sign is exactly the same as the last sign we saw, just steel, aluminum, and polyvinyl chloride. The telephone post is wood, which is cellulose lignin, iron, which is iron, uh, and it consists of wires, which have a rubber coating and are made of copper, so copper and isoprene. The snow is just water, which is dihydrogen monoxide. The tree is cellulose, which is cellulose pulp, and wood fibers, which is cellulose lignin, slightly different. The street light has glass, copper, a battery, plastic, and steel, which are silicates, copper, and then copper for the battery, iron and zinc for the battery, and polycarbonate for the plastic, and steel for the steel. The wall is made of concrete and brick in the back there, which don't have chemical names, they're just concrete and bricks because they're compounds. Well, mixtures, not compounds. Alright, so in this picture we have my dog, Chase, who may or may not be... Actually, let's be honest, he is the cutest dog in the world. He uh, has skin, fur, and eyes that we can see, which are much like a human, just keratin and collagen fibers. The fur is very similar to hair. Uh, his bowl is in the picture, which is plastic polycarbonate. His ball is in the picture, which is cotton and plastic, so gasipium and polycarbonate. The couch is made of linen, linen, I mean wood and cotton, which is cellulose lignin, because linen is also made of that. Wood is also cellulose lignin, as we know, and gasipium is cotton. The cage is made of aluminum, steel, and plastic, which are just aluminum and steel, and then polycarbonate once more. The door is wood, plastic, glass, and copper. So cellulose, lignin, polycarbonate, silicates, and copper. The carpet is made of nylon and wool. And this particular nylon is a type of nylon named Nylon 66. And wool is mainly comprised of keratin. And entirely comprised of keratin when you bring it down to its core components. There are pictures in the background which are just paper, wood, and glass. So cellulose pulp, cellulose lignin, and silicates. The desk back there is made of just wood and steel, cellulose, lignin, and steel. My first easy picture, uh, the object on the bottom there is a candle, which is wax, cotton, and aluminum. Wax is something called hentriacontine. Cotton is gasipium, as we know, and aluminum is just aluminum. The rock is an igneous rock, and it is made of silicon and oxygen. Uh, the paints on it are white. But even the non-white ones are made of titanium dioxide in this case. The toy boat is just made of wooden paper, so cellulose lignin and cellulose pulp. And the bench is wood and acrylic, so cellulose lignin and polymethyl. Another easy picture, uh, you have the counter top in there, which is marble. And marble consists of calcium and carbonate. So calcium carbonate is the compound. There's the small lamp right there which is plastic, aluminum, and copper for the outline, which is polycarbonate, aluminum, and copper. The ladle is just a plastic label, ladle, which is polycarbonate. And the wipe container is plastic and paper, so polycarbonate and cellulose pulp. My last easy picture is a, uh, it has the carpet right there, uh, centering around the whole thing, which is nylon 66 again and keratin, which is wool. The shoes are similar to the shoes we saw before, which is just cloth, plastic, acrylic, rubber, and plastic, isoprene, cloth red 2R, nothing we haven't seen before, polymethyl for the acrylic. Uh, the ball is cotton and plastic once again, so it's the same ball as before, gasipium and polycarbonate. The frisbee is rubber and plastic, which is isoprene and polycarbonate. For my last but not least picture, it is my back room which has the closet doors, wood, plastic, and copper, cellulose, lignin, polycarbonate, and copper. The windows, which are made of glass, plastic, and wood, silicates, polycarbonate, cellulose, lignin. The couches have linen, wood, cotton, and uh, these specific couches have, do have a dye on them, which is cellulose, lignin for the linen, uh, cellulose, lignin for the wood, gasipium for the cotton, and then indigo dye, which is a specific type of dye that we saw with the denim before. The pillows are linen, which is cellulose lignin, and cotton, which is gasipium. The carpet is nylon once again, so nylon 66, and keratin wool. The walls are wood and drywall, so cellulose lignin and gypsum. And the lamp is plastic, which is polycarbonate, paper, cellulose pulp, aluminum, which is aluminum, copper, which is copper, and glass, which we know to be silicates. Uh, these are my eight pictures. I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. Uh, there'll be more content coming soon, I promise. Join the fan base. 
As opposed to a review, I'd like to look at this as more of a highlight reel. Go back over the past 30 minutes for you, the countless hours for me, and just remember all the best and worst parts of this project. We met in Section 1 and learned all about who made photography in Section 2, why they did, and the philosophy behind it. In Section 3, we took a look at cameras, which we needed to do to move forward. Section 4 was simple enough, why we do each step in the development, and in Section 5, we went more in depth by naming the exact chemical equations and processes by which we develop photos. Section 6 was the write-up, in which we confirmed that this development process in science was right, proving our hypothesis. Section 7 was the other side to Section 5, naming the chemicals and explaining all of their properties. Lastly, Section 8 was a painstakingly long monologue of picturey goodness. The real question is, what's the point? No, not of living, the point of the project. And I think it's this. This project encapsulates all of the basic principles of chemistry, from the first elements we learned about to the charge rule which is used in balancing equations, we identified some polyatomic ions and even wrote the chemical names for any chemicals we could identify. We did balance equations, found products. This project proved that there isn't anything that we can't do. I believe that's the point. We managed to do it all. Made a real accomplishment and a real result. And there's something special and cool about that. Thanks for taking this ride with me. Good night. Goodbye.